Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today. I'll be talking about a subject that I'm very passionate about. Uh, I've been working on it for a few years now, and uh, I have become more and more interested in it as I have seen uh, the great results that it has provided uh, many of our patients and how it's really changing patients' lives on a daily basis. I will be talking to you today about migraine surgery. Migraine is a major uh, cause of morbidity in the United States and the Western world, affecting more than uh, 28 million Americans, and 50% uh, of uh, uh, patients report severe impairment or need for bed rest during an episode. Uh, the prevalence is 11.7% uh, uh, of the population, and it's much more commonly in females than males, affecting 17% of the female population. In the past, there have been several uh, mechanisms uh, to describe the pathogenesis of uh, migraines, uh, and most of it dependent on uh, theories that is uh, centered or focused on central problems. However, more recently, the trigeminal nerve or branches of the trigeminal nerve uh, have been implicated. The trigeminal nerves give sensation to multiple branches to different uh, uh, parts of the face, and this been, has been studied and uh, shown in multiple uh, reports in the headache and in the neurology literature. So what happens when the branches of the trigeminal nerves are uh, being irritated, the nerve sends signals or substance P, uh, which causes inflammation and irritation of the cerebral blood vessels, and this allows the migraine attack to propagate. So the trigger site theory hypothesis is basically based on that nerves traveling through or near certain muscles in the head and neck can become pinched, which causes irritation and starts a cascade of events that eventually leads to a migraine attack. This is very common as if you look at the uh, leg, uh, there is a piriformis syndrome which is caused by the compression of the sciatic nerve by the piriformis muscle. Uh, in the arm, we deal uh, quite a bit with pronator tunnel syndrome, which is uh, caused by the compression of the median nerve by the muscles uh, of the arm. So when talking about migraines and which nerve uh, uh, fibers uh, uh, cause it, uh, it, there are four zones for migraines. There is a frontal zone, temporal zone, occipital zone, and nasal zone. Uh, the frontal zone, uh, the supraorbital nerve is, uh, as you see here, as it travels to give sensation to the forehead, it can be compressed by a muscle called, called the corrugator muscle. This muscle is responsible for bringing the eyebrows together. As this n nerve travels through this muscle, it can be pinched by, by it and cause the frontal migraines. Temporal migraines, on the other hand, usually headaches that start in the temporal zone or in the temporal area, uh, usually caused by the zygomaticotemporal branch of the trigeminal nerve. And what happens here is this nerve crosses through the temporalis muscle. You see this is here an endoscopic view of the, endos of the uh, temporalis muscle with the nerve penetrating in it, which makes it very susceptible to being uh, compressed by that muscle. The occipital zone is basically the greater occipital nerve right here being compressed by the semispinalis muscle. This is the zone in the back of the head. So... Uh, compression of this nerve, and this is one of my patients, you can see as the nerve was released from the muscle, you can see it here before, um, this is before on a different patient, but this is here, is the one of my patients that been compressed, decompressed, and you can see the nerve now lying free over the muscle instead of running through it. And following the nasal zone is um, um, usually caused by a deviated septum. So the process is multiple steps. Uh, first, uh, the migraine has to be diagnosed by a neurologist. Uh, the patient has to have uh, tried and failed optimal medical treatment. Uh, and they should be suffering or should be suffering from medical medication side effects. The patient will fill a di Botox diary, which, indicate, which has multiple uh, uh, tables, but one of the most important is to indicate where are the headaches start, starting. When the patient comes back, with the filled headache diary, we uh, give them Botox in the area that is most likely to be starting the attack. So it's either the temporal, frontal, or the occipital. And we uh, give the patient another diary and see if the, uh, if the Botox has an effect. After a month, the patient comes back and we compare two diaries, the pre-Botox and the after-Botox. And if the patient has significant improvement in their symptoms, then we consider them a candidate uh, for surgery. 
So this is an example of a patient. She was uh, 42 year old. Uh, she has been suffering from migraines for 21 years. Uh, she got 22 episodes every month before we gave her Botox. We gave her injection um, of Botox and that dropped her number of episodes from 22 to 6. Um, we gave her another injection in the uh, um, occipital area and dropped it to uh, zero. And finally we did her surgery and she has been migraine free uh, for the uh, one year follow up after surgery. Um, so the surgical results, um, uh, the biggest study was uh, published from uh, Cleveland, shows a randomized prospective study, 100 patients in the treatment group and 25 patients uh, were controls. The controls basically uh, received only saline injections versus the treatment group received Botox injection and the results were 92% improvement. That included 35% uh, of patients who had com complete elimination of symptoms versus 57% who had significant improvement. Uh, so the total uh, is 92%. 35% complete elimination and uh, the 57% had significant improvement, which we identify as um, at least 50% reduction in the symptoms of frequency, intensity, and duration. This was much higher than that of the control group, which re received the, either the saline or the sham operation with only 15% improvement. So this is a, a quick summary of how we approach um, uh, surgical migraines. And Thank you very much. I'll be happy to answer any questions.